Hello again. In this video I'm going to talk a little bit about measuring current. When I started testing all these meters originally I said I wasn't going to look at the current inputs because I was basically looking at the transient protection circuitry of the front ends of these. One of my viewers of the 17B Plus had asked about using this to measure a 4 to 20 current loop. This is some old equipment that I have. These are all shunts. These put out 50 millivolts depending on the current range. This happens to be a 50 amp one. This one is rated for 100 amps and this one is a 150 amp. The shunt in the back, this one's rated for 500 amps. This is a old galvanometer. This was also made by Weston Electric. You could take something like this, put it in voltage mode, look at the voltage across the shunt and then you could get your high current measurements with this or we can measure very low currents with this meter directly so currently I have a small shunt resistor placed across the two inputs and then the meter is set to its most sensitive level I also have two back to back diodes placed across the shunt this will prevent the voltage across the meter from getting over a volt and again all I'm trying to do is basically prevent any damage to this meter so as we can see right now on the Bryman, it's putting out roughly uh, 9.43 milliamps. And we can see it's just slightly less than 10 milliamps on the meter. Here we can see the Bryman is now reading roughly 32.7. And we can see the Weston is also about 32 milliamps. The movement will swing both directions with this type of meter, so of course we're reading a negative current this direction. And if I flip the two leads, now we can see it's reading on a positive scale. So to look at current signals in the 4 to 20 milliamp range really isn't a whole lot of problem for even an antique meter like this. Again, it's just a question of setting up a shunt to get the scaling that you want. You know, is this going to be as accurate as the Bryman here? No, it's not. But if you're just looking to make a gross measurement, this will work fine. Alright, so what is a 4 to 20 current loop? Basically, the idea is that we want to make a system that's very immune to the environment that it's being used in. You'd see a system like this being used in industrial type applications. I've actually worked on systems like this. This is a PLC controller that I helped work on many, many years ago. Can see with all the Phoenix connectors. This is actually based on a 4 to 20 current loop. The idea is you'd have sensors or transmitting devices that could be like a, a pressure transducer for example. This pressure transducer could then output a 4 to 20 milliamp signal to represent say 0 to 50 psi. So on the receiver side I end up with some kind of a resistor out here and I'm basically looking at the voltage across this and the reason I want to do that is if I have a common mold voltage here or the voltage across these two shift this system is going to be pretty much immune to any kind of interference like that so the value of R out here is typically going to be in the 50 to about 500 ohms and normally what you're going to see with systems like this as well is they're typically going to be running off at 24 volts. Now there are different voltages that are used. The PLC that I just showed you that I'd worked on, that's a 24 volt system. I would say 24 is probably the most common. So you're working again with very low voltages out here. So looking at this system, you only end up with 16 milliamps of current swing. The system that I showed you that I'd worked on is actually 16 bits, so 2 to the 16 divided into 16 milliamps gives us uh, 250 microamps per count. So very fine resolution. You know, if you're working on actually developing the design of a PLC, making a measurement like this would be a lot more critical. I think in most cases, even 1%, or if you had a meter that would read down to 160 microamp resolution, that's going to be plenty adequate. This is the Hyoki DT4252. We can see it only has an amp scale, but it'll read all the way down to a resolution of 1 milliamp. And that's the same thing for this Fluke 115. It has a resolution of 1 milliamp. 
the viewer had asked about the 17B plus. Of course this meter has a milliamp scale. We can see if we place it into milliamps this thing will resolve down to 10 microamp resolution. Of course I have my favorite meter. This is the Bryman. And we can see in the milliamp scale this thing will resolve all the way down to a microamp. This is the Ampro BM510 and again we can see it has a milliamp scale. And again we can see in the milliamp range this will resolve down to 10 microamps. The AM530 again has a milliamp range. Same thing for the Unity 181. We have the milliamp range. If you're troubleshooting a current loop it'd be nice not to have to break the wiring you could use a clamp meter like this. This is the UT210E and this will resolve all the way down to one milliamp. It works uh, fairly well actually. If you're only looking for a measurement at 10 percent you may actually be able to get away with making a measurement like that with this meter. The problem that you have with it is you can see right now it's reading roughly uh, 15, 12 milliamps. And we can see you know as you rotate this around in different positions you know this is going to be affected by that it also be affected by any kind of stray magnetic fields okay currently I have all five of these meters tied in series and currently I'm driving this with roughly 20 milliamps again if we want to take the measurement using the UT210 we would just zero out the current see we're reading roughly 20 19 milliamps so one of the meters that I like is this little fluke 101 this meter is actually very robust it's been through a lot of testing here obviously one of the complaints people have is it doesn't have a current input but if you're only looking at 4 to 20 signals what I've done is I've just taken a 10 ohm resistor here and I'm just going to use that as a shunt We'll place that right across the inputs like so and then we'll use this to make the measurement in voltage mode. With a 10 ohm resistor at 20 milliamps it's going to put out roughly 200 millivolts. You notice we don't have a millivolt DC scale on this. But this meter in the DC volts mode will display all the way out to 1 millivolt. So I haven't trimmed this resistor at all, obviously. You can see I've actually gained one digit of precision over what the Hioki and the 115 or the Fluke 107 was doing. So, you know, if you were using a precision resistor for this, this would actually do fairly well. So let's go down a little bit lower in current. This is with roughly 3.5 milliamps applied. And we can see our Fluke 107. Again, it's displaying 2 milliamps and 4 milliamps on the Hioki. We can see our little 210E, again depending on where I place my hand next to this. You can see the little Fluke 101 is reading 3.5, 3.4 milliamps, 3.5 on the 17B plus and 3.5 on the Bryman. So again this is with roughly 800 microamps applied. I'm trying to use this 210E for this, next to impossible. We'll zero it out and you can see it's still displaying one or two milliamps off slowly drifting back down to zero of course the Hioki DT4252 and the Fluke 107 are both reading zero it's beyond the limit of what these two meters can read but our Fluke 101 just using our shunt again very close should have trimmed this resistor a little bit closer again for 4 to 20 milliamp loop you're somewhere between 50 and 500 ohms so adding this 10 ohm resistor isn't typically going to be a problem for the burden voltage this is looking at the other end of the scale so this is roughly 47 milliamps one of the things I'd like to show you on this Bryman you notice that it has this 4 to 20 milliamp setting we can see here in the upper right corner this is showing a percentage of 4 to 20. So if you didn't want to do the math in your head, this will actually display that percentage. So you can see we're at 19.416 milliamps 
and that equates to 96.34 percent. I'm just going to slowly decrease the current and you'll be able to see the percentage decrease. So I've pushed it below 4 milliamps and we can see it's displaying a negative 0.88 percent. Also with the Bryman we can go down to the microamp range and you can see we can gain another digit here. We can do the same thing with the 17B plus. Unfortunately both these meters will over range at roughly 4 milliamps. Okay this is roughly 133 milliamps and now we're in a range where this 210E could probably read this without any problem at all. And we can see 134 milliamps with this and again our Fluke 101 with our 10 ohm shunt you know fairly close. So what I've done for this test is I've set all the meters to their high current inputs. I've also swapped out our Fluke 101 with the 10 ohm shunt for the Unity 181A. So currently we're putting out roughly 700 milliamps. Okay, I'll go ahead and increase the current through these. So again, this is roughly 2 amps. Maybe a few of you have been following on EV blog, but a few of us have been changing the EEPROM, including myself, for this meter. One of the nice things with this is this can actually read much higher resolution now than the original 2000 count. Unfortunately, if you zero out the meter, it will revert back to a 2000 count. So what you end up having to do is basically take a mental note that it's currently got about 35 milliamps of offset. This is with roughly 6 amps supplied. And we can see there's a little bit of error between the Bryman and the Unity, but not that much. Certainly nothing that I would be concerned about for anything I would use the current measurement for. Well, I think that concludes the video. Hopefully this video was helpful for those of you looking at lower current measurements with some of these meters. For those of you who just joined up, I want to welcome you on board. My plan down the road is to test some pocket meters back on the transient generator. So hopefully we can get around to that fairly soon. Well, until the next test.